he will speak about large-scale dynamics and integrable systems. Okay, uh, so let me first thank the uh, organizers for in inviting me to give a uh, talk at uh, such a nice workshop. Um, today I'd like to talk about uh, large-scale dynamics, uh, out of equilibrium dynamics with integral systems. The reason why the title is a bit uh, broad is that just because I will talk, uh, I mentioned some uh, several works that I have done over recent years. So uh, before starting talking about what I've done, let me introduce you my uh, collaborators. So I uh, basically collaborated with uh, these people, especially intensively with my supervisor, Benjamin Doyon in King's College London. So uh, like I said, I will talk about uh, about my several works in the past years, but the main reference would be uh, just these two people, one of which is from uh, collaboration with Elijah and Benjamin uh, two years ago, and the one is from the people, uh, by these people, and I guess some of these uh, the people are in the audience as well. Okay, uh, so. So my primary interest is in the non equilibrium transport in uh, one-dimensional uh, quantum uh, integral systems. And so in one dimension, we have a number of experimentally relevant quantum systems that, are, that happen to be integrable, like, say, a uh, leap linear mode, leap linear gas that can be realized by uh, ultra quantum gases, or a uh, spin chain model like XCC spin half chain that, are, that is known to describe some materials. And uh, the peculiarity of these models is that the dynamics of uh, these models uh, is very special in the sense that uh, they do not normally equilibrate to the ordinary ensemble, uh, rather to a uh, more exotic one called uh, generalized Gibbs ensemble. And this kind of lack of thermalization was observed in, uh, in the famous experiment of the quantum Newton's cradle like, uh, like a decade ago. And this kind of triggered the interest in this uh, kind of study at the time. So, uh, so that well, I'm interested in the dynamics, but in particular, uh, in homogeneous uh, dynamics, uh, like a, like a transport phenomenon. Um, you might expect that, based on the fact that the integral system generally have an um, infinite number of constant charges, you have only a ballistic transport for uh, integral systems. But that is actually not true. And it has been known that there are examples where diffusive and diffusive transport can uh, develop, like, uh, say, spin uh, transport in in uh, spin half chain and gap regime. So, uh, despite uh, in, in contrast to our uh, intuition, uh, the physics of the transport of integral systems can be very rich. So, uh, based on these uh, motivations, uh, I'm going to study the dynamics of integral systems. But uh, in general, it is, it is very hard to work out uh, for computation of uh, integral systems to study the dynamics, at despite of integrability. And so the question we asked to ourselves three years ago was, uh, is there any way to efficiently study the dynamics of integral systems uh, rather than working out uh, full analytical computation? So the, um, our answer then was, uh, hard dynamics, so why not apply the hard dynamics? Uh, so I'm going to talk, uh, talk about the hard dynamic approach to study the dynamics of integral systems, and I guess that uh, something uh, speaker, previous speakers have uh, talked about uh, in this in this uh, workshop. So, but uh, still, uh, let me quickly recap the basic principle of a uh, hard dynamic approach to the integral system that we call uh, generalized hydrodynamics, GHD. And then I will introduce you some uh, recent development uh, like like this, and then uh, finish with some summary. Okay. <coughs> Good. So, uh, okay. so let me uh, start with uh, this topic. So, um, when I want to apply the hydrodynamic approach, there is always a situation that I have uh, in mind. Uh, which is simply the system has to be vary, varying in, in a smooth fashion compared to a microscopic scale like uh, uh, interparticle length or mean free path. So let's imagine that your s our system is in varying smooth fashion like, like this picture, and there is a, a um, emergent scale that we call so uh, that looks nearly homogeneous 
if it's same from the uh, um, and just give you uh, expression. So uh, for as for the expression value of the density of a constable charge, it has been known that it can be explicitly written down in this very simple form, where um, h of theta is just the one particle eigenvalue of uh, of the constable charge q y, and the rho p of theta is the quantity called the density of particle. So uh, this is the expression that has been known for a while. Then the new input, uh, the new finding in a, in a work was that a similar expression actually uh, exists for the expression value of the current um, that was uh, proposed in these works. Uh, and that uh, reads like this. And this is pretty much similar to this expression except this appearance of the new quantity that we call effective velocity. So uh, this is uh, the expression that we derived. And uh, this is, uh, can be considered as the um, velocity of the excitation, and it can be uh, characterized by TBA. So uh, we'll give this precise definition in the next few slides. Well, let me just for now uh, solve, uh, put these expressions into the macroscopic continuity equation and solve the equation. Uh, so uh, that can be done by uh, implementing this uh, space-time dependence on oil iron scales into these quantities and then, and then just uh, uh, replace this uh, macroscopic continuity equation like this. And then this has to hold for every single uh, constant charge. So we are led to conclude that this equation has to uh, hold at the level of uh, class particle. So this is the main finding. And this is what we call JHD quotient that is expected to govern large-scale dynamics of a, um, integral systems. Okay. So uh, now we need a bit of TBA. So uh, let me go quickly. It, uh, so this is the TBA is basically about distribution of the cost particles uh, um, in equilibrium. And it can be controlled by the quantity called filling function defined in this way, where the pseudo energy satisfies uh, this integral equation. And uh, here, the only model imp dependent input is the differential scattering kernel. Uh, for instance, it looks like this for the Lippinger model. And once you determine it and, um, and give uh, the source term, which, I which are like uh, uh, temperatures and, chemi and chemical potentials, then you can solve this uh, self consistently, consistently, and then obtain uh, pseudo energy, and then n of theta. So uh, once you have it, then you can use it to de uh, define uh, the density of state, uh, which is like this. Uh, and this is also again an integral equation that can be solved iteratively. So uh, having uh, this n of theta and uh, OS of theta, then you can just multiply them and obtain the density particle that uh, is used in the definition of the previous quantities. So this is the basic uh, ingredient uh, that we need. But these are uh, about the, these are expected to des describe the equilibrium state. But we need what we need is a local equilibrium. So how can we uh, implement space time dependence in this in these quantities? So that's the question, but it, the answer is very simple. So if you uh, recall that the expression value in the on the Euler scales can be evaluated uh, with this uh, uh, operator, the the answer is just the imp uh, implement this space time dependence explicitly through the Lagrange multipliers. So that's what we do here. And then now we have the local, uh, these quantities that can describe the local equilibrium. OK, so the remaining quantities uh, that to be introduced is then uh, the effective velocity. So this is, uh, uh, can be given this uh, form pretty much like the previous quantities. Uh, where the A and P are now is just the uh, energy and the momentum. Uh, this velocity can actually be regarded as the GG equations of state. 
in the sense that it relates density and current. So this is the ex uh, expression of the effective velocity. And uh, having this, uh, we can expect that we can solve this, the, the GHD quotient. So uh, this uh, expression can be proven by using uh, crossing symmetry like we did in a paper. Uh, but a more complete uh, satisfactory proof can be given by the form factor expansions. And this is uh, can be done by uh, uh, in, um, ongoing works by these uh, people. And in particular, uh, our approach makes uh, use of the combinatorial aspect of TBA. And that's uh, something I'm going to talk about uh, uh, in, in, this, in this talk. Yes? Well, I will mention later. Yeah. So uh, now I believe I, I could give you some uh, rough idea of how the GHD can be derived and the principle of the, this approach. So let me proceed with uh, the new developments. So the first one is uh, uh, classic and quantum correspondence. So we, this is a correspondence between the GHD and hydrodynamics of uh, classical uh, hardware systems or software systems. So uh, Imagine that you have a gas of hard rods that is uh, that propagates on this line, and this uh, red rods uh, describe the hard rods with the distance at the length d. And the kinematics of this model is very simple. They just uh, uh, scatter elastically upon the collision and accept that they uh, propagate freely on this line. So this is a very simple model. But uh, you can also interpret this kinematics in an alternative way by putting, uh, so like a quasi particle, something like quasi particle that we call tracers um, at, it, at the middle of each rod. So the, then the, these uh, tracers would, would be, for example, uh, if you have uh, two tracers like here, and upon the, uh, approach to this, this uh, distance like a D, then they will jump forward. Like for this uh, red uh, tracers, they will jump forward in this way, and for this blue one, they uh, jump forward this way. So uh, this kind of kinematics uh, is uh, obviously to the dynamics of the hard rod. And this kind of picture is, in fact, uh, useful to generalize to, um, to the case that uh, the roads slide um, in a softer way. So this uh, this picture is uh, something I'm going to use, and uh, noticeably the number of traces in uh, in a given um, velocity domain is preserved. So this is uh, this kind of suggests that uh, this model has um, um, some sort of integrability. Okay. So uh, the although this uh, the kinematics dynamics of this model is very simple it, it uh, still has a non trivial interaction like the let's say collision so uh, the hydrodynamics is non trivial and the the hydrodynamics uh, was intensively studied in um, in nature. and this uh, effect of velocity uh, was derived in a rigorous way in this uh, uh, model which is like this and um, this really looks like uh, the GHD equations of state, I mean, effect of velocity. If you do this kind of um, identification, like uh, V equals theta and this kernel equals uh, minus T. So uh, this suggests that there is a strong connection between GHD and the hardware dynamics of the hardware gas. So now this um, effect of velocity emerges. So due to the large scale dynamics that we, that we are considering. So although the uh, rods propagate freely, ex uh, except collisions, but uh, after uh, traveling long time and long distance, they, their kind of mean velocity would be modified uh, um, according to the collision they have done. And then you will uh, have um, this kind of effect of velocity. This is, uh, uh, so this suggests this. Um, the connection with GHD, and uh, so the now question is how to then modify this hard rod uh, system 
in order to have uh, class count systems whose hydrodynamics um, is coin uh, coinc uh, coincides with the GHD. So uh, our answer is as follows. So let's let the jump, jump distance uh, depends explicitly on the velocities. So for example, if the distance is uh, positive, then uh, the class particles uh, um, scatter or jump forward uh, as be like pretty much like the hard rod. But if uh, the new point is that the, the, uh, the case where the distance is negative is also allowed, in this situation, once they collide each other, they uh, jump uh, backward and then keep uh, propagating with the same uh, velocities as before. So uh, this is a, a kind of modification we make. So uh, one might notice that uh, kind of dynamics is uh, really like that of solitons in the sense that upon the collisions, what happens is the um, only uh, spatial displacement and the velocities are unchanged, unchanged upon the collision. So uh, this suggests that it looks like solitons and in fact, uh, large-scale dynamics of um, solitons um, has been known to have um, GHD-like uh, dynamical equations uh, for a long time. So it has been known uh, for a while. So now we have a kind of um, coherent understanding between uh, the hydro dynamics of this kind of rolls and uh, hydro dynamics of solitons and hydro dynamics of um, quantum integral systems. So this is nice. Uh, so having this kind of uh, um, kinematics, and uh, modified kinematics, we can uh, implement this uh, a change into uh, in order to derive the effective velocity uh, like we did for the hard rod gas. And then we end up with this uh, new expression, which now is uh, exactly the same as uh, GHD um, equations of state. So uh, now we have a uh, very useful tool to simulate the GHD. So you don't need to uh, work out for quantum simulation in order to study GHD. You can use uh, molecular dynamics of these uh, objects in order to study the GHD. And uh, we compare the validity of this uh, molecular simulation with uh, GHD, uh, the predictions with uh, uh, by the GHD in the partitioning, partitioning protocol, and also we computed effective velocity. Uh, um, and now you, you can see the agreement is really good. So uh, this gives us a way to simulate uh, efficiently the GHD. And uh, further virtue of this simulation, uh, this uh, molecular simulation, is that it's very easy to account for the effect of um, external potential. So uh, uh, this molecular simulation uh, can be used to describe, for example, uh, the like uh, the um, uh, quantum Newton's cradle uh, experiment. So the, the gas of integral systems are, um, are scattering in the confined potential, that kind of uh, uh, situation. And that we did um, uh, last year uh, in order to describe the quantum Newton's cradle but uh, I'm not uh, going to talk about that uh, topic in this talk. So, okay. The next one uh, would be about the uh, what happens to GHD if, if the, the system is very close to uh, ground state. So uh, let's consider, for example, the liquid gas. And at zero uh, temperature, it's known that this system is uh, simply the film field Fermi C, which can be written in this way. And uh, it is also known that uh, even if you tune external potential, you can um, the system still possesses a Fermi-like, Fermi-C-like structure, with now two Fermi points depending uh, on space, uh, like this. So this is uh, has been known for a while and, and called the local density approximation. So uh, this is a known result, and that uh, what we uh, going to do is uh, kind of a dynamical extension of this uh, approximation. So uh, let's uh, consider the case situation like 
the di distribution function is composed of a k disjoint Fermi C's like this. So, uh, and further assume that this, uh, this structure is, uh, is maintained in the course of time evolution. Then uh, we can plug uh, this n of theta into the GHD quotient for uh, n of theta. So this is, I didn't read, write this in the previous slides, but it's a, a simple uh, matter to derive this from the uh, from the GHD quotient for the rho p of theta. So uh, this uh, the GHD quotient also fall, holds for the effect of, ah, sorry, n of theta, and you can just uh, in, uh, plug. Uh, this form into this uh, equation and obtain this kind of uh, finite number of uh, uh, differential equations. So uh, we call this kind of hydrodynamics governed by uh, 2k equations, uh, 2k HD. And of particular interest is the case when k equals 1, uh, in which you have only two equations uh, that can be actually uh, cast into the form of conventional hydrodynamics, which is, uh, which are just um, continuity equation of the density and, and uh, ordinary order equation. So uh, this equivalence is expected uh, if you note that the 2HD is just a two component uh, Galilean invariant hydrodynamics. So uh, it has to be, uh, has to take this uh, form of this conventional hydrodynamics. But uh, this is uh, this is not saying as uh, the GHD boils down to the conventional hydrodynamics at zero temperature. So, in fact, um, it turns out that the zero entropy HDs uh, can avoid the gradient catastrophe or the development of very sharp structure, which generally uh, exists in the conventional hydrodynamics, by uh, uh, thanks to a large solution space available in GHD. So uh, you might wonder what I mean by this large solution space in GHD. So uh, let me clarify this point by a uh, concrete example. So uh, which is uh, what we call a dissolution from 2HD to 4HD. So let's imagine that you have a lip linear gas confined in um, Gaussian-like potential initially, and then release the gas uh, um, at some point from the potential. And then what would happen is simply, so your initial bump will be uh, split into two bumps that are propagating to the opposite directions uh, with the same velocity. And uh, in general, these uh, bumps develop would develop a very sharp structure in the course of time evolution. And then uh, it's, uh, in, in, in general, in the conventional hydrodynamics, uh, when the sharp stru stru uh, structure develops, then it uh, the CHD cannot uh, sort sort that out. It, uh, the, sh the sharp structure that we call shock will be uh, persisting in 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 the time evolution uh, with the entropy production. So this is not good for 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 applying oil hydrodynamics because the entropy has to be uh, conserved in oil hydrodynamics. So uh, this is a problem. But this it can be actually circumvented in, in the general hydro hydrodynamics by, uh, by the following mechanism. So once the, the wave uh, encount encounters a kind of a sharp structure, then you can uh, increase the number of uh, Fermi C's, and then uh, that would be uh, resulting in, uh, in, in the dissolution from the KHD to 2K plus 2HD and in this case, 2HD to 4HD. So we uh, kind of uh, checked this idea uh, against the simulation by the molecular uh, dynamics that I introduced just now. So uh, this uh, block dots uh, describes this assumption of um, a passage from 2HD to 4HD. So until at some point, the, the dynamics is, is described by 2HD, but after some point when this, uh, this, uh, the, the profile gets very sharp, it's taken over by 4HD by increasing the number of uh, the food components. And, and, and the, block, um, so yeah, the blue line is the, 
is from the molecular simulation and the agreement is very good. So this kind of uh, mechanism is uh, confirmed against the molecular uh, simulation. And we didn't check this, uh, this mechani mechanism against the more proper uh, quantum algorithm called Abacus, but uh, we did see uh, the agreement between the Abacus algorithm and uh, their entropy GHD before developing the sharp structure. So this is uh, the result. You can see the agreement between Abacus and GHD. And also uh, for, for comparison, uh, we uh, draw this um, line from the sound wave uh, approximation. So this is a kind of linear wave ex uh, approximation, and this is not uh, obviously the same as the GHD lines. So this really suggests this dynamics is uh, really far from um, equilibrium. Okay, so uh, the next topic is about the GHD for classical integral systems. So uh, I have been applying to the quantum, inter uh, the applying this idea of the uh, higher dynamics to the quantum interval view theories. But uh, one might ask, uh, can you do a similar business to study the dynamics of classical integral view theories of quantum uh, interval systems? And uh, and this is a very natural ask to question. Uh, what we uh, so we, we we indeed study this uh, using uh, classical synthetic Gordon model, which can be uh, obtained easily by taking this simple classical limit, sending h bar to zero. So uh, this is um, analytically this is very uh, straightforward, and uh, this is also good for numeric numerical point of view because you can simulate cl classical systems uh, using uh, uh, metropolis uh, very easily. So that's exactly what we did. And we, so you can see, for example, for the partitioning protocol, we computed the, uh, the um, expectation value of the trace of the star energy tensor, which is DV finite. Uh, and the agreement is beautiful. So uh, this is one thing, and uh, the news thing in this uh, in this in this uh, topic was was that we also uh, checked the validity of the of the two point functions pr predicted by um, the GHD. So GHD has a power to predict that uh, the two point functions on Eulerian scales, uh, but this has not been, I believe, checked uh, by any previous uh, models. So we did that for the first time. Uh, for the classical uh, Gordon model, and we chose uh, these uh, two uh, two-point functions, and the agreement is again uh, rather good. So this is be uh, the first verification of the two-point functions uh, on Eulerian scales predicted by uh, generalized hydrodynamics. Okay. So uh, this is uh, uh, the story about classical uh, systems. Okay. So, so the finally, uh, I will uh, briefly talk about so the, the how to really prove the GG equations of state. So this is based on uh, the proof I gave in 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 our original paper that was based on uh, the form factor expansions. But there was some uh, mm, uh, missing gap in the, in the proof. So I'm going to fill it using uh, the graph theoretical uh, method. So uh, again, we will, I will focus on only on uh, relativistic uh, interval quantum field theories uh, with diagonal scattering for simplicity. So um, a starting point is, um, as ever, uh, like a Masardo formula which is uh, like this, where uh, now this function f is called the connected form factor. And um, I wouldn't give a precise definition of the connected form factor. Uh, you can consider it as a sort of a, a particular limit of a diagonal uh, ma matrix element uh, uh, by eliminating all the divergences arising in the limit. So uh, this uh, expression tells us that 
if f takes this form, then you can resum this, uh, this series explicitly, and you will have um, the current average, uh, which is same as I, uh, um, same as the one I gave in 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 the, in the previous slides. So uh, this is the statement I'm going to prove in this proof. Uh, and how to do that? How to do so is uh, based on uh, uh, it is uh, starting from the connected form factor for the density. So uh, this is uh, known for a while, uh, which was proven by uh, Saler like decades ago. So uh, this is the starting point, and I uh, will do some manipulations to this, and then end up uh, with this uh, conclusion. So that's what I'm going to do. OK. So uh, although I said I will uh, manipulate some uh, connected form factor, but I, it's, in fact, uh, easier to work with the uh, symmetric form factor. So let me uh, uh, introduce you this kind of nice expansion of the symmetric form factor uh, with respect to the connected form factor. So uh, now the new quantity that we call curly L uh, appears. So curly L of alpha is determined, uh, de defined by simply a determinant of this L of alpha. And now L is a matrix uh, called uh, Laplace matrix. And this uh, phi here is, uh, is the same as the scattering kernel that I introduced uh, before. And by saying L of alpha, uh, I mean that, uh, okay, so alpha is uh, now subset of this uh, integer set. So when I say L of alpha, I mean that uh, L of alpha, which is a matrix, a minor of the, uh, so it's a min minor of the matrix uh, uh, L, obtained by uh, subtracting alpha rows and alpha columns of this uh, Laplace matrix L. So uh, this uh, L of alpha is a minor, and then by taking the determinant, you can have this curly L of alpha. So these are the input in these uh, expansions. Then uh, the interesting point is that uh, according to the Kirchhoff's theorem that it has been known in the community of graph theory for a very long time, you can, in fact, uh, reinterpret this uh, quantity in terms of the trees and forest. So it is. Uh, it turns out that it is a summation over a uh, spanning forest, uh, each of each tree of which contains exactly one vertex from uh, from the interset alpha. So uh, you might uh, have uh, no clue what this definition is about. So uh, let me uh, give you some uh, examples using three particles. So uh, let's say we have three particles, and, and further, uh, I take alpha to be one. Then uh, you can uh, easily show that the only uh, allowed uh, forest uh, um, in this expansion is just is simply, uh, simply these three guys. And just because alpha is not now a uh, set, but just a number, so in fact, each forest is a tree. So uh, so I didn't give you a definition of the forest, but it's a very simple. It's just a, uh, a set of trees. And I only care about trees uh, with that self-group now. So uh, that's, uh, so that's uh, what I'm, uh, uh, the assumption I make. and. So this is uh, the the first that exhausts uh, the constraint giving this summation when I choose alpha to be one, and if I choose alpha to be uh, two and three, then we have a di of course different forest. Now, for example, this one is uh, a set of this tree and this tree. So this is just a point, but we consider it as a tree. And now uh, this is uh, indeed each. Each tree has a one vertex from uh, from the from the alpha, which is now two and three, and uh, there is always uh, also another allowed forest which looks almost the same, but the difference is that the numberings are uh, a bit different. So uh, this is a kind of uh, mm, examples of this uh, summation. 
so uh, okay. So uh, this is a kind of a reinterpretation of this uh, L of alpha, uh, carry L of alpha in terms of uh, uh, trees. But we can do that uh, for the F of C, uh, the connective form factor as well, uh, which is uh, just the sum of the spines, uh, each of which possesses H and P prime at two ends. So you can see, uh, for example, this one. And if you just uh, put this H in, on uh, the top of this uh, expression, then it's just the uh, edges then uh, connected by the edges like uh, uh, phi one two, phi two three, and so on, and then end up with uh, p prime at the bottom. So this is uh, spine, uh, and also uh, oh, uh, there are, there are uh, permutations of this uh, spine as well. So. Uh, so th that's the interpre inter graph theoretical interpretation of this uh, connected form factor, and then we can we are now in position to do a summation of this quantity, which is actually uh, uh, acting like a, like a gluing this uh, spanning forest and uh, and the spines. So, for example, this is the uh, the forest that would appear in the summation. And then there would also be uh, this kind of uh, spine uh, connected by H and P prime. And this uh, product is simply uh, a merger of these quantities resulting in this, uh, this uh, spanning tree. So uh, spanning first becomes a spanning tree upon this uh, taken product with respect to uh, the spine, which is the connected form factor. So this is this is uh, exact what happens in the summation uh, in this uh, in here, and uh, um, so in, in it turns out that this summation can be uh, can be uh, interpreted as a summation over a spanning tree uh, uh, with h and p prime. P p prime Located at an um, arbitrary two vertices in in a given um, uh, tree. So the point is that uh, the two vertices uh, h, and h and p prime are located at the any can be located at any positions uh, vertices in 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 a tree, and this uh, really suggests that we have a factorization uh, with respe respect to h and p prime. So uh, uh, we can write down this symmetry fog factor in this way, uh, where now this re remaining sum is just uh, about the summation over uh, a spanning tree without H or P prime. So uh, this is uh, the first observation we made. And then uh, we can uh, transform, transform this into uh, the symmetry form factor for the current. Uh, if you notice that uh, from the continuity equation, we have uh, uh, this kind of nice relation between the uh, symmetric form factor for the density and that for the current. So uh, by simply plugging this expression into uh, this uh, relation, it's just uh, you immediately see that uh, we have a nice expression similar to this for the for the current as well. So this is the expression we have. And now the final observation we uh, have to make is that thanks to the uniqueness of the path between uh, two arbitrary vertices, you can always uh, extract some uh, un an unique spine connecting two vertices uh, from a given spanning tree. So uh, this, again, uh, uh, can be interpreted as a summation over a spanning tree Spanning trees now with uh, H and E prime uh, located at two arbitrary vertices, and uh, from that kind of uh, uh, spanning tree, you can always extract a unique spine. So you you have a one-to-one -one correspondence with the with this uh, spanning tree and uh, the product of the spanning forest and and spine. So you can do. Uh, the, this uh, argument in backwards, and you end up with 
uh, this kind, uh, this uh, relation, which is exactly the same as uh, the previous one for the density, where now if uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is uh, uh, this has should be current, but uh, and here should be e prime, but uh, <laughs> this uh, this has to take this kind of form, which is uh, which is this. So this uh, is concludes the proof. So this is uh, this is nice because this proof is really combinatorial and doesn't really use the specific model dependent uh, properties of this uh, um, of the model. But uh, uh, so the natural question, like uh, Bruna asked, uh, is uh, can we extend this to the quantum spin chain? And and uh, for a moment I don't know how to do that because uh, first I don't know if there is a notion of symmetric or connective form factor in the spin chains, and also generally spin chains are have uh, non-diagonal scatterings. So uh, uh, for now I have no idea how can can I can extend the, uh, to the spin chains. But what I can certainly do is to take uh, non-relativistic limit to get this uh, um, um, to have expression for the for the relativistic case and the power of this kind of resummation is uh, uh, is aided by the graph theoretical uh, interpretation and it is also uh, intuitively clear how to do this uh, resummation so th this is a kind of virtue uh, of this uh, of this approach okay so uh, now I finished uh, basically what I wanted to tell you. So let me summarize. Uh, so GHD is a hydrodynamic theory for interval systems in terms of uh, class particles. And it's, it's uh, yeah, the virtue of this GHD is that uh, the basic equations are uh, very uh, simple and it can be solved very easily in the in various ways. Uh, so even if you don't really know the this, um, this machinery of the interviability, you can uh, really go directly to the equations and play with inhomogeneous dynamics of uh, integral systems. And also, uh, correlation functions, uh, both in homogeneous and inhomogeneous states, are uh, accessible by a GHD. So this is also uh, good information for the experiment, uh, experimentalists as well. And uh, there is uh, there was a uh, recent very exciting uh, development in this uh, research, which is a determination of uh, the um, exact diffusive correction to the GHD uh, equation that was done by these people, and I uh, believe this could pave the way to uh, really analytically study this uh, trans uh, diffusive transport of the um, XXC uh, gap chain. So. Uh, Okay, so this is the end of my talk, so thank you very much. All right, uh, questions please?